Hey there, tennis fans. Uh, we are here with top 100 ATP pro Michael Russell. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thank you. Um, and we're going to talk to him about how he prepares for his matches, as well as a couple of other things going on on the ATP tour. So let's get started. Uh, we are in the off season right now. How do you maximize the time that you have, the, the several weeks that you have, to prepare for the next season? Well, I think it's important that I spend a good week to two weeks also resting. You know, the, the vigors of the tennis tour are so difficult, and you really break your body down. So I spend a lot of time relaxing, not playing as much tennis. And then uh, as I get closer to getting ready for Australia, you know, I really kick in the uh, fitness and, and start running a lot more, doing the weights, and getting my game ready for the, you know, the whole 11-month season coming up. When you are on tour, because you mentioned this, uh, when you are on tour, how do you make improvements to your game when you're, when you're caught up in the grind of playing tournament after tournament? It's difficult. Um, you know, trying to improve while you're still competing, there's so many different variables you know happening during a tournament uh, traveling uh, different conditions at each tournament but you know I try to analyze each one of my matches and, and learn from each one of my matches over my 13 year career obviously you know, I wish I would have learned quicker some of the things which I now am able to do but uh, it's just an ongoing process Okay, and you know when we're when we're talking about preparing for matches, uh, does it depend on who you're playing, how you prepare? For example, uh, if you knew you were playing Nadal, would you practice a particular pattern of play? Definitely. You know, obviously playing Nadal, he's left-handed, which makes a big difference because there's not that many left-handed players on tour. So the patterns that usually work against a right-handed player probably wouldn't work against him. So not only do I want to practice with maybe a left-handed opponent, but also work on patterns that would be more successful against him. Can you give us a little bit of a hint? What, what would be successful? Well, you know, obviously Nadal has such a great forehand. He's so quick getting around his backhand to hit his forehand. So you want to try to negate that as much as possible um, and taking away his ability to run around his backhand. So in order to do that, you need to hit more balls into his forehand corner. And, you know, it'd be the opposite playing a, a right-handed guy or a guy like Roger Federer, who mm -hmm. is so good running around his forehand, but it's the opposite corner of the court. Okay. Now, you know, speaking of the, uh, of the Dundal match, you describe the experience of playing him at Wimbledon. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, to be able to open Wimbledon, you know, I've never been able to do that before and play the number one player in the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would have liked to win the match, and that's obviously the main thing. But uh, it was fantastic. I played great in the beginning to get up a, uh, a break, and you know I think he worked really hard, and, and you know it didn't give me a lot of free points, and it turned out to be a good match. Now you've uh, you've played a couple of other high-profile matches. You played David Ferrer in Australia. You describe the difference in feeling when you're at a Grand Slam compared to some of the other tournaments that you that you play. Well, the biggest difference is you know obviously playing three out of five. It's such you know you get up two sets to love and. Obviously, most tournaments you already won the match, but you're you're far from from over, and you know fitness plays a lot more of a factor, and the crowd at a Grand Slam is phenomenal. You know you get thousands of people at each court, and you can hear the crowd in the, in the distance. You know maybe watching another match, so uh, it's the pinnacle of our sport. You know I, I, that's why I play tennis to play the Grand Slams and and try to do the best I can and, and hopefully beat you know the top guys at a Grand Slam. Well, because the experience is so unusual, when you're at, let's say, for example, center court at Wimbledon, uh, when you're out there, do you really even feel the crowd? Do you, do you see that they're there? Is that something that you recognize, or do you keep your focus entirely on the court? No, I mean, I definitely feel the crowd. I, I try to focus on the court, but I also thrive off the crowds cheering, and, you know, I really try to entertain because that's, I don't know, that's why I love playing the sport. You know, I was trying to have, we had some great points at all, and I had a couple dives, I think, and he came up with some amazing shots, and, you, know, you just feel a lot more like a you know professional athlete or a performer entertainer you know doing that and the, and the crowd appreciates it well you know speaking about nadal and those guys you know talking about Nov novak djokovic and the kind of year he's had yeah. um yeah as as an informed observer you know because you were at the top as well uh what do you think his key to success has been well obviously first and foremost you always have to stay healthy you know and he did a great job his team of of playing so many matches and, and week after week, you know, I think he won a couple tournaments back to back, Indian Wells, Miami, um, and to be able to do that, to be healthy and play at the level that you have to be at to beat everybody, let alone just the top four guys, mm -hmm. but everybody who's gunning for you is phenomenal. And then, you know, his confidence is at a, a whole different level, um, especially during the year. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see, you know, in 2012, if he can, you know, repeat such an amazing year. 
Now, it seems like, you know, mentioning staying healthy, it seems like towards the end of the year, it's a very common thing for some of the players to complain about the length of the season. Uh, what's your take on this? Do you think that it needs to be shortened? I think it's good. I think it's difficult. You know, a lot of players, you know, they complain that the season's too long, but then, you know, they're entered in the first tournaments during the year, so it's kind of, mm. you know, which one is it? But, you know, I think it'd be great if the season was shorter. Um, but at the same time, if you shorten the season, then you might be taking away tournaments. So you got to put maybe more money into the other tournaments to kind of make up for the lack of tournaments not having it later in the season, I think. Mm. <clears throat> Now you did play college. How how did that experience set you up for life on the tour? Well, I, for me, it was a, it was the best decision I made because it just matured me as a human being. Um, not only did I play sixty to seventy matches in college, but also you know the social aspect and going to school and interacting with other students and it just and physically you know working uh, in the gym and, and working on the court on the courts. It just uh, I think it helped get me ready to play on tour. Mm. Now, uh, switching topics to American tennis, what do you what do you think about the future with the young players that we have? What do you think about the future of American tennis? Um, I think it's good. I think it would always be a lot better. Um, you know, it's difficult because the U.S. is such a big country and it's so spread out that you know a lot of the the kids you know, might be you know good on the West Coast, might be good on the East Coast, and it's hard to get maybe the the federation coaches that want to also get involved you know with with the students to uh, collaborate on everything where you know you see some of the successful uh, tennis federations like Spain and France much smaller country you know and they have the tennis hubs of Barcelona and Paris is a little bit easier but you know I, I think you know there's a lot of kids coming up you know they're they're bigger they're stronger and you know I think there will always be uh, good Americans coming up. Do you think it's a matter of the rest of the world kind of catching up to us in a way? You know I <laughs> Tennis in the United States, it's not, you know, it's not as big as, you know, football, baseball, basketball. There's a lot of more sports competing with tennis, where in, in the other countries, tennis is probably one of the top three or top five sports um, in Europe and South America. So I think that's also plays a big part of it. You know, we don't, we have such a big pool to choose from, but there's just there's so many choices. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and, and if you had to pick a couple of younger players who, are, who you've seen are coming up in the rankings, not necessarily Americans, um, can you name a few of them that you think have a promising future? Well, I mean, you got a guy uh, from um, France who is actually Bulgarian, uh, Grigor Dimitrov, um, who has fantastic shot making ability. Um, Ricardis Barankis from Lithuania, um, also another player who's great. Um, uh, some of the Americans, I think, uh, Ryan Harrison had a pretty good year this year, so he's playing well. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of kids coming up, and you know, obviously, as they they all get more experience and get more comfortable playing on the tour level, I'm sure you know they'll have good futures and, and obviously mental and, and keeping healthy. How do you get along with the other players on the tour? I get along well, and obviously, I've been on tour a long time. I, I mean, longer than most of the guys playing, so I. You know, I'm friends with the American guys, but I'm also friends with the Australians, the Europeans, South Americans. So, um, you know, I enjoy playing the tournaments, you know, outside of the U.S. as well, and uh, and traveling. So it's it's fun. Okay, and uh, what are your own goals going forward for next year and for the rest of your career? Well, I really like to push this year. Um, you know, I, you say that every year, but I, I really love to try to crack the top 50. You know, it's always been my goal, and uh, I got close in 2007, I believe. But you know, I, I'm doing a lot of fitness and, and really trying to amp up my game and my serve and, and try to push you know the boundary and try to crack that level. Final question: How what what role does fitness play in your game? I know that you know you have guys like let's say Milos Raonic who they have a big serve, big weapons to rely on. So yeah. how important is uh, fitness in your game? Yeah, it's a huge. I mean, for me, I mean Raonic should be the complete opposite spectrum. I'm more like a David Ferrer, uh, Leighton Hewitt type guy that you know not going to give you any free points. I'm going to run down everything and and you feel the pressure of me just not giving you anything and I want to kind of suffocate you. And so fitness is the, the key to my game. You know, it also it also gives you confidence mentally as well. So I'm definitely trying to do a lot of fitness and, and let my opponent know the pressure that they're I'm putting on them. Great. Well, thanks for stopping by and good luck in 2012. Thanks a lot, Jane.